design. Thank you, you too. Welcome to another episode of LA Fish Guys. We're gonna service a jellyfish tank today, and it's kind of an interesting little story as to how I acquired this tank. Those of you who do know, and those of you who don't know, uh, I've developed a product called the Jelly Aquarium, uh, which is a tank made specifically for jellyfish. Uh, in the process of marketing this tank, I'll promote it via the internet, uh, via the trade magazines, and there's a uh, list price, or what we'll call the consumer or end user price, and there's also a reseller's price, which I'm trying to draw in uh, or appeal to uh, tropical fish stores uh, because they too can become sellers of the system and make a little bit of money and of course develop a, a service clientele. Well there's a store here locally in the San Fernando Valley who got an inquiry from a customer and they made the uh, the pitch and then the next thing I know um, these people are calling me the end user um, and once I caught on to the fact that they were um, uh, had already spoken to a local store I didn't want to interfere with that so I referred that sale back to the store so the store makes the sale and they make their share of the profit they go to install the tank and I guess they made a couple little errors and anyhow I get a telephone call from the customer their customer uh, asking me if I'll come out and take a look at the uh, installation because they're not real happy with it so far. So I come out and I talk to them and I show them what's going on and the owner of the home says to me, says, will I take over the account? Because the people who installed it don't know what they're doing. Once again, I mean, I'm in a tricky position. I'm, I'm the Jelly Aquarium guy and I can't turn down customers, but at the same time, I can't really be taking the customers of stores who have resold my system, so once again, I pass them back to the store. I also called that store owner, as well as that store manager, and told them that their customer was frustrated with their installation of the tank, and that he had asked me to take over the service. So I encouraged them to kind of get their act together. About a week later, the customer calls me again, and he says, if you don't take over this account, we'll find someone else who will. Well, this economy is not one where you're turning down work, and if the customer has already twice said that they're not happy with the people who installed it, then I gotta step up to the plate. So I ended up taking over the account. Well, sure enough, about two weeks later, after I've started servicing the account, that store owner calls me and asks me what's going on. And I said, I told you, you were, you were in jeopardy of losing the customer. I told you, you need to take care of the customer. And now I'm telling you, you lost the customer. And of course, now the store owner, he thinks that I've stolen the customer. And he actually says, well, how about getting us $25 of that uh, service fee? And I'm thinking to myself, why would I want to give you $25 of the service fee for an account that you lost? Not only is it an account that you lost, but it's an account that I passed to you originally. So anyhow, there's a little bit of a black eye there as far as me and that store uh, in the relationship. Uh, but at this point, my goal is to take care of the customer. Then at that point, we ran into a jellyfish livestock issue. And I had hooked up with um, another producer who kept promising and promising and promising dates, but unfortunately, that producer never came through. So the first of the year, as you saw in one of my episodes, earlier episodes, uh, Always a Second Chance for Success, I made another attempt at growing those jellyfish. Keep in mind, this customer's already got a tank installed. He's waiting for livestock. Come February, I approached that supplier, and of course, once again, they didn't have livestock, so I had to say to the homeowner um, that I couldn't get him livestock when I promised him I would. And granted, he got a little frustrated, so I said, if you'll be patient, I'm making a second attempt here, and, and I'll be able to come through with some jellies for you here in a month. Well, that month has gone by, and I have been successful in growing the jellyfish this time. And so we started out bringing 12 jellies to this customer, and he seemed to do well with them. So we added another 12 for a total of 24 in the tank. Uh, and so far, he's been very successful. 
So I thought today we would service that tank and I would take you along and show you what's involved in servicing a jelly aquarium, or in this case, a 48 inch in-wall jelly aquarium system. So come along, let's learn something together. This system here is the 48 inch in-wall version and it's been built into this black cabinet that sits on top of the counter here. Its filter system is in another room adjacent to here and inside here we've got about 24 tank raised moon jellyfish. Uh, so far we're having pretty good success with these and I believe it's due to two things. One, we're not overfeeding the tank or seriously controlling the feeding and two, I've got the temperature down at 55 degrees. Now you may think that's a little cold, but the reality is these are Pacific Coast moon jellyfish. So not only are they used to being at that cooler temperature, but also cooler temperatures make things happen slower. So you may not have as much growth in the jellyfish, but at the same time, you're not going to have as much decline uh, due to uneaten food or food that's left over at the bottom of the tank. And that's been the biggest challenge in the past. And so today what we're going to do is go ahead and service the tank. Now you'll be surprised to find out that all I'm going to do is a five gallon water change. Now keep in mind we're not trying to decrease nutrients or anything in the system. All we want to do is siphon that debris off the bottom. And keep in mind that any larger water change, unless I'm going to chill that water in advance, I'm bringing it at room temperature. And believe me, there's a significant change in the way the tank operates, more specifically the way the water flows when you introduce 75 degree water into a 55 degree tank. So let's get to work here and start cleaning the system. Hey there, my name's Jim Stein, I'm the LA Fish Guy. Are you interested in learning more about marine aquariums? Are you interested in hanging out with a bunch of other people who are interested in learning more about marine aquariums? Well, this coming September 9th, 10th, and 11th, the Greater Iowa Reef Society is hosting MACNA 2011. That's the Marine Aquarium Conference of North America, and it'll take place in Des Moines, Iowa. They've asked me, the LA Fish Guy, to come give a presentation, so make it a note that that presentation will be at 10 o'clock that Friday morning, so schedule yourself appropriately. And here's how to gather more information. magazine believes that our hobby, our fellow hobbyists, and the animals in our care are best served by the free distribution of quality information. Reef Hobbyist Magazine provides hobbyists with critical husbandry information with an emphasis on marine ornamental breeding efforts. Reef Hobbyist Magazine is available for free in local fish stores across the country, or you can subscribe at www.reefhobbyistmagazine.com. So here's the top of the system. We've got the light hood lifted up and we're looking down inside the tank itself. That's the exit panel where the water or the jellyfish potentially could exit and that egg crate panel blocks them from exiting the tank. The water in turn flows over here into what we'll call an overflow. This here is the gate valve bringing the newly or filtered water from the filter system into what I'll simply call the return pocket. And that's a sealed compartment there that's got those little thumb screws that give you access into that compartment. You can see here in the course of the last week we've grown a little bit of algae and it's not expected or it is expected since there's a this proximity to the lights here. 
So part of the cleaning is gonna be the algae here at the top of the system. But at the same time, the biggest challenge I find is controlling or getting the debris off the bottom of the tank, again, without sucking up the jellyfish. And I've kind of developed a little um, siphon tube for doing so, or at least allowing me to surgically go in there and do so. Um, as I mentioned, this is a gate valve, which allows the flow of water to be controlled. There's one little hiccup in the installation here. Um, there is a horizontal exit out of the bottom of this overflow. And the problem with a horizontal exit is there's going to end up being a pool of water down there at the bottom. And you can hear at the moment that splashing noise. And this does tend to bother the homeowner. Um, not only does this uh, light hood cover the top of the tank and muffles it a little bit, uh, but we've also got ourselves a lid here that we place across the top of the tank to try to contain some of that noise. But in general, it's a, a bottom uh, exit and there's no pool of water that collects. So that was one of the uh, application errors that was kind of made, but uh, again, you learn by making those errors. That horizontal exit comes out of the wall here. You can see there's a uh, drain pipe and then there's also the return line. Uh, we ended up putting in a vent here um, because it created a siphon sucking the water out of that cabinet which caused the water to level to rise and lower and each time it lowered it would uh, create a siphon and then each time it got to the bottom of the siphon and would break the siphon it would make a gurgling noise so we've added this T with an open top in fact I kind of put a bit of a vent here so it can suck air and doesn't create that actual siphon the water just kind of flows out of there and then it passes along the ground along the uh, side of the building here and that water in turn comes into this uh, room here which I'm having to compete with a number of different people here for things. Uh, there's the filter system, the sand filters for the, uh, the big pond. Um, then there's an air conditioning unit here as well as some other storage, more storage. And then this is our uh, filter system for the Jelly Aquarium which has a refrigeration unit back here. But I fear that this room uh, in the summertime is going to be a little bit of an issue temperature wise. So make it a point to come on back for part two as we show you how we're going to service the tank now that we've discussed uh, its application and how the filter system fits into the situation.